system generation power system generation we have mainly there are two types of sources one is non conventional non conventional energy sources and the conventional energy sources conventional energy sources do you know what is conventional meaning do you know what is conventional meaning what is non conventional what is conventional conventional means these are the old methods conventional method suppose we are following the conventional current direction conventional current direction means what conventional current direction is the direction decided by the old people that's why we call it a conventional current whatever the old methods of generations of course still we are using those methods we call as conventional methods recently what are the methods developed for producing the electrical energy is a non conventional energy methods so non conventional energy methods are sun energy solar energy wind energy what is that wind energy and tidal energy what energy tidal energy next to geothermal what is that one geothermal next to mhd magneto hydro dynamic and biomass what is that biomass etc all are come under the what is this one non conventional energy sources conventional energy sources we have hydro power station hydro power station and thermal thermal power stations what is that thermal power station nuclear power station diesel power stations gas power stations gas power stations thermal nuclear diesel gas are the regarding but in our syllabus we have hydro power station thermal power station and a nuclear power station we have to concentrate on this one coming to this hydro power station this is a very important and try to concentrate all of you sorry actually that i am arranged no problem now onwards i will give a time to you hydro power station what is that hydro power station sir first question is whenever we want to construct a hydro power station what are the primary considerations we have to take what are the primary considerations we have to take while constructing the hydro power station primary considerations for hydro power station what are the primary considerations while selecting the hydro power station first of all whenever we want to select a hydro power station number one primary requirements primary requirement is catchment area what is that catchment area this is the area to store the water where to store water some area is required that area we call as a catchment area what is that catchment area the second one of course some places are there they have availability of catchment area we can store lot of amount of water but average rainfall is required what is required average rainfall is required average rainfall average rainfall so what is the you know very well average rainfall means uh, in the year how many days the rain is coming and how much water is accumulate into our reservoir that is the average rainfall and the third condition third one we have to go for geological conditions geological conditions of the soil geological conditions of the soil 
sir i think you all of you know in india uh, the near uh, first two hydro power station having around 4.5 megawatts which is constructed in our karnataka state near, near to mysore near to mysore usually usually you see where we can construct yeah shimsha yes exactly exactly that is the first two hydro power station constructed in india first hydro power station constructed in india later onwards in maharashtra and several places we have a plenty of food. very good very good yeah 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 right now coming to the geological conditions normally what is the geological conditions we have to consider soil ground soil the soil should not absorb the water rocky soil is always best whenever rocky soil is there that will not absorb the water otherwise what happens sometimes we can see in the villages in rainy season if you go in there uh, traveling in that route there is a plenty of water is appearing in rainy season after 3 or 4 days or 1 week if you come to the same place nothing is there only soil is available water is not available because that soil is absorbing the total water in those places are not suitable for not suitable for hydro rocky soil is important so what are the primary considerations catchment area average rainfall and the geological conditions these are the primary considerations of a Uh, while constructing a any hydro power station okay yes hilly area because that is a rocky soil it consisting of rocky soil it consisting of now now we are going to talk classification hello what i am going to talk classification of hydro power stations hydro power stations number 1 based on capacity based on capacity what capacity is what capacity power generating capacity power generating capacity if the power generating capacity of a hydro power station up to 5 megawatts we call as a micro idol plant micro idol plant we can call as a micro idol plant micro idol plant if the power capacity is 5 megawatts to 100 megawatts 5 megawatts to 100 megawatts we can call as a medium capacity plant medium capacity plant not head not head that is what different low head medium head we are talking based on the capacity first you have to remember that i am talking about the power capacity if the power capacity is up to 5 megawatts micro idle plant 5 to 100 megawatts medium capacity plant 100 that is 101 to 1000 megawatts 1000 megawatts we can call as a high capacity plant high capacity plant more than 1000 megawatts we call as a super capacity plants super capacity plants <coughs> classification of hydro power station based on capacity second one sir classification of hydro power station based on the water head water head water head usually up to 30 meters if the water head is up to 30 meters we call as a low head we call as a low head if the water head is 30 meters to 100 meters medium head medium head more than 100 meters we call as a high head So, up to 30 meters, low head, 30 to 100 meters, medium head, more than 100 meters, we call as a high head. But, this is the information is available in most of the textbooks. 
most of the textbooks. But only one author, C. L. Vadva. C. L. Vadva is given up to 70 meters is a low head. 70 to 300 meters is medium head. More than 300 meters is high head. That's why I am not considering. Only that author is written. Remaining all the authors who written for the generating stations, they given these values. That's why we are following these values. Up to 30 meters, low head. 30 to 100 meters, medium head. And uh, greater than 100 meters, we call as a high head. What is this one? High head. This is what we have. Classification of hydro power station based on the capacity, based on the water head. Hello. Now we are going to see classification of hydro power station based on the based on the construction based on the construction. This is third one. What I am talking third one. Based on the construction. Sir, based on the construction, what is the classification, sir? Runoff river. Runoff river without bondage. Without a bondage. Runoff river. Runoff river with bondage. And storage plant. What is that? Storage plant. Next one. Pumped storage plant. Pumped storage plant. Runoff river without bondage. Runoff river with bondage. Storage plant. Pumped storage plant. This is the classification based on the construction. Hello. The last classification for the hydro power station based on the operation. Based on operation. Number one, base load plant. What plant? Base load plant. Number two, peak load plant. Number two, peak load plant. Base load plant and peak load plant. Based on the operation. So, hydro power station, primary considerations. Catchment area, average rainfall, geological condition. First, you write down all these points. I will explain what is this runoff river. And what is its base load and everything I will explain. First you take a classification of hydro power station based on the four categories. One category based on capacity. Second category based on the water head. Third category based on the construction. Fourth category based on the operation. Now, so see all of you. First of all, I want to talk uh, what is runoff river without bondage? What is runoff river without bondage? Usually, runoff river without bondage means bondage means storage in capacity. When you are able to store water in some place, that is a pond. That is called pond. Without bondage, what does it mean? In rainy season, the water is flowing in the canals. The water is flowing in the canals. What happened when water is flowing in the canals? There we can play, place a one dam. Once if the water is flowing like this, we can store some water at the dam and again it is leaving. Then power is generating. If the, you come, come to the summer season, no water is flowing in the canals, no power is developed. So, without storing the water, due to the natural rainy season, the power is developed a station which is called Rannath River without bondage. Hello, that my point, what is runoff river without bondage? What is the point I told you? There is no storage equipment, there is no storing of water. Only the water coming in the canals, we create some water head, we produce the electrical power. When it comes to summer season, there is no production of the electricity because water is not available. Water is not available. Right. Coming to the runoff river with bondage. With bondage. In the name itself it has a meaning. What is with bondage? With bondage means we can store some water. 
whenever you require we can utilize that water for the power producing electricity to produce the power electrical power we can store the amount of water whenever you require that water we can utilize for the power generation that is called the run off river with pondage sir what is storage plant sir what is meant by storage plant sir storage plant means it contains run off river without pondage and with pondage parallelly we are doing suppose rainy season has came some dam reservoir is available we are storing some water we are utilizing some water for the purpose of power production both are doing simultaneously complete water is not used for power production complete water is not used for storing of water why because what happened in rainy season if you are not utilizing the water for power production couple of weeks only one or two weeks the dam will full that water we have to divert to the canals and sea it may be having chances of wastage so that's why we want to do parallelly what parallelly some amount of water is used for power production some water is used for storage for the future purpose that is called a, that is called a storage plant most of the our plants are storage plants most of the our plants are storage plants sir what is meant by pumped storage plants sir what is meant by pumped storage plant what is meant by pumped storage plant pumped storage plant this is a very beautiful thing pumped storage plant is a very beauty thing what happened is here we have a dam the water is stored here water is stored here and we have a penstocks here these are the penstocks these are the penstocks used like this and here we have a power house turbine and power house to produce the power the water is leaving here through tail race at somewhere we can keep one more dam is here one more dam is here this is one dam this is another dam this is another dam what here we do is if any availability of power this water is again pumped into the main reservoir the same water we can utilize for the power generation same water that can be utilized for power generation so from the dam water is coming and from stored dam water is stored in the secondary dam again whenever excess power is there that power we can supply to the power house whatever the water is available which is pumped into the main reservoir that's why its name is called as a pumped storage plant this name is called as a pumped storage plant whatever the power is used for generation same amount of power again back retrieve back into the main reservoir with the help of a excess power supply such a construction of the plant is called pumped storage plant pumped storage plant 